Hi folks and welcome back to the channel. We've got another allotment update today but I'm starting in the garden because I wanted to start with a little success. Here I've got my first cut and come again salad. We've got two trays, there's this one and this one as well. And this one is a salad mix, it's a bit of a mystery. I'm not sure these are all edible but <laughs> so far they've been quite nice. But it's just something that's so nice to have in the garden. It kind of lives in the conservatory and we can just take it. And uh, it's one of the few successes at the moment. <laughs> Let's get up the allotment and I'll show you what I mean. Okay, folks, here we are actually on the allotment. Now, I've been really busy recently. Like, life has just been crazy. I've got work, we've got redecorating going on in the house as well. And... Um, this weekend we went away down to Cornwall, now that the re restrictions have lifted a little bit. It's so nice to get away and finally see some friends. But I, I've, I, I feel like I looked away from the allotment for like two minutes and it's just exploded. It's gone crazy with this super hot, lovely weather and all the rain that we've had recently. Bugs flying into my hair. Um, it's just, it's gone absolutely crazy. So. <sighs> I've been looking around a little bit and I'm just feeling overwhelmed. I don't know where to start, so I'll show you. I'll, I'll show you, I'll have a quick whip round. We'll have a little look at the damage and then I'll take a deep breath. <laughs> and it's just about prioritization, I guess. We'll see what needs to be done first. So the main thing is just the grass growth. It's absolutely crazy. And because of the way that I've got the beds laid out, it just instantly starts to look super messy as soon as the grass grows, because it, this one especially, look at this, it all just grows straight into the bed. This is my potatoes here, obviously. And up here, it's the same thing. Look at this, the compost base. It's just crazy how quick it starts to take over. So I'm gonna try not to do a full tour because I'm sure there's a lot that I wanna get done today. It's still kind of early, it's about three o'clock, so I'm hoping I can get loads and loads of jobs done, but beetroot is coming along fine. I'm taking quite a few little harvests of radishes now. These are really nice. Not the prettiest. Sometimes the slugs like to have a nibble, but they're looking okay. Carrots, not so much, not doing too well, but some of the spring onions are ready to harvest now. But if you remember, this bed originally was gonna be my brassica bed. But I was looking at it yesterday, I came up a quick, quickly yesterday, and I just don't think it's gonna be big enough. I kind of scalped away at the edge a little bit, you might be able to see that, I dug over some more, and I just looked at it and went, you know what? No, let's not, let's not try and cram them in here, because uh, I want purple spraying broccoli and cabbage and all this. So I've planted the first thing in here, which is the Fruit de Ronde courgette, my most advanced courgette. I sort of put it out as a little bit of a tester, see how it does. And I think I'm gonna put some more kind of courgette squashes, that kind of thing in here. Onions are okay. And then I'm gonna reuse my brassica bed from last year because it's by far the biggest bed and it's not great. You kind of wanna do rotation. Uh, club root is the main, the main thing you wanna try and avoid on your brassicas. And y just yesterday, I put in here as a little test a purple spraying broccoli and a cabbage. <laughs> and I was like, I don't think the pigeons will still be hungry for brassicas. They've probably got seeds and insects and all sorts to eat now, but no, <laughs> had a good nibble on those. So that's not so great. The garlic is looking a little bit sorry. The strawberries, just weeds. Look at this weedy, weedy bed. And over here, I've given this bed a little weed and this is gonna be where cucumbers and squashes and all that go. But yeah, everywhere else, just so much, so much weedy stuff. Let me show you inside the greenhouse quick, and then I'm gonna start doing some jobs, I think, because there's lots that needs to be done. Okay, in the greenhouse, look at these chili peppers. <laughs> Hopefully you can hear the smile on my face. These are looking pretty good. They're still not growing as fast as I would like. There's some up here as well. But these are looking pretty healthy to me. You might remember in the chili pepper update video from a few weeks back, I was talking about how they were all really kind of like a yellow green. They had a real kind of pallid color to them. They're definitely looking a little bit too pale. I would like it if they had a much darker color. And I'm pleased to report that they have all turned a properly deep green now. This one's one of the jalapenos. 
And, well, they don't really want to be in these pots for too much longer. If we have a look at their roots, in here you can just hopefully start to see the first few roots poking through. So it's not too bad, but I'm quite keen to get them moved on into the bigger pots. And the main issue with getting them onto bigger pots is that that is going to take up the whole greenhouse. There's not too much going on in the greenhouse now. We've got a few little all year round lettuce down there. Uh, you see my trusty neem oil as well. And up here on the shelf, most of this stuff is ready to go out now. We've got some lettuce, some calendula marigolds, and some, oh, some French marigolds. We've got our squashes down here and some cucumbers. They're looking really good. I just want them to be a little bit bigger before I put those out. And down here, I've got a tray of salad, which I might take home today as well. So it looks really good over here because there's not much at the moment and most of it can go out. But of course, down there, we've got our brassicas. So I think that's the priority today, really, is for these brassicas to get put out. And that's because these don't really like being in the heat of the greenhouse and it's a bit annoying constantly taking them out. They're really, really root bound. They should have gone out a couple of weeks ago, really. But before they can go in, we've got to give them some protection from the pigeons, which have already done a number on them, and the cabbage white butterflies as well. The large and small white, they are little devils and the caterpillars will go right through. So, a little while ago, I was complaining about the net structure that I had. I had loads of great suggestions for trying to make it a little bit simpler and a little bit easier, but I've not had time to implement any of those suggestions. So I'm gonna go with basically the same thing, but I do have a little secret weapon this time. And it's very simple, but it's spring clamps. So before I had these little nasty ties that you had to get on your hands and knees and slowly untwist and hope they didn't get tangled with the weeds. So this time around, I've just got some spring clamps. It should be nice and easy to clip the netting on and take it off, in theory anyway, we'll see. So I'm gonna get the net on, but I do also need to give it a weed. But you should be able to tell, even from where you are at the moment, that this bed is not very weedy at all. And this is the one that I trialed as a no-dig bed when we first took on the allotment. And I thought the no-dig hadn't really done anything for weeds because we used compost that was a bit weedy. But you can see after a season's growth, this one looks completely different from the rest of the beds that I've got. And it doesn't look like this because I'm constantly going through with a hoe. It just naturally seems to suppress the weeds. So a little bit of an indication that no dig might have actually worked quite well for this, but it does need a quick weed with the hoe. And hopefully you can see just down here yesterday when I planted out these brassicas as well, I planted out a couple of these calendula, the pot marigold, and one of the French marigolds as well. God, this has been mullered. <laughs> but really exciting moment to actually start getting some border flowers in. So here we've got all the brassicas lined out on the bed, spaced out, ready to go in. <laughs> I'm really excited. It's so nice seeing them. But I wanted to talk about them just quickly and explain what I'm doing. Down the middle, we've got the purple sprouting broccoli. This stuff gets huge. It won't be ready to harvest until kind of February, March, but such a wonderful crop and there's bugger all else you can grow on the plot at that time. So it's really kind of makes it that little bit extra special. And then along the outside, I've got all of my cabbage. These are a mixture of Prima cabbage and earliest of all. So hopefully that will give me a little bit of succession. Hopefully they'll grow at slightly different rates because yeah, ideally you don't want to be putting eight cabbages in the ground all at once. <laughs> but I have always wanted to try my hand at a bit of sauerkraut. I quite like fermenting. It makes me feel like a wizard. So um, we've got the purple spraying broccoli spaced about 70 centimeters. And then coming off from those, we've got the cabbage in a kind of diagonal or like a diamond formation. It just means it's a bit more space. They won't be competing with each other so much and it should be okay. Also, it gives me a bit of space to put in, like here you can see I've put a salad in. I can dot a few of those in with this. I can kind of put those in between the cabbages in line with the purple sprouting broccoli. And over here we've got some raspberries growing, so <laughs> as much as I'd like to keep them. No, I was thinking if I could put them somewhere else. No, I think they've got to go. And then I'll put in some more border flowers at the end. So normally with my crops, I keep it really simple and I do just stick them in the ground. If I've got a bit of blood, fish and bone, I, I do put that in. Although the foxes can sometimes come and cause you problems when they start rooting around for that. 
but I want to give these a little bit of a better chance and to do that I use just a sprinkling of garden lime. This is really good because brassicas want slightly more alkaline soils but this also helps to prevent brassica club root which is a really nasty disease that can kind of really ruin your brassica crop. So I tend to make quite a big hole as well to dig this in. I don't want it concentrated around the roots. So I like to kind of dig quite a big hole for these, mix it all in, mix the fertilizer in as well. I do have some blood fish and bone today. You don't need too much, just, just a bit to give it a little bit of a boost and you get it really mixed in. And it means that it will service the plant for just that little bit longer. Purple spreading broccoli really benefits from being planted super deep. You want to give it a nice, good support because when the winds pick up in winter, sometimes they get blown over. Last year, last year I planted cabbages and purple spreading broccoli, but um, I had no idea which was which. <laughs> this was a real potluck and everything came up in strange places, but <laughs> it's nice to actually know what I'm planting this year. So there we go, that is the last cabbage. That is the brassicas. I've got some more lettuce in the greenhouse, so you know what, I think I might put that in as well. This stuff grows pretty quick, so I can have these harvests out before the cabbage and the brassicas really start getting going. It's looking good, isn't it? I'm really happy. This is a big job to have get, got done. And I mean, I probably could have got these in like a month ago. These are very hardy plants. They don't need to go in this late. And last year they went in far earlier than I managed to get them in this year. But it's just what happens, isn't it? You don't always get things done to schedule, but they're in now and that's the important thing. Time to put some salad in. I think that's the last one for here. Although, actually, <laughs> I'm really gonna cram this bed. I'm gonna put a few more border flowers up the other end. And then watering and then net. So folks, it's time to take one last look at this bed while it still looks lovely and kind of natural because we're about to cover it. The covering is just necessary. There isn't a natural way that I can do this and prevent these things getting completely decimated. So although it looks ugly, I mean, I hate it personally. I think most people don't really mind. I think it might be something to do with filming videos. It makes it very difficult to kind of compose shots and stuff sometimes and always very difficult to film. But practically it's very difficult to get in and weed and all that kind of stuff. But I just use these gardening stakes, they're kind of metal rods with a plastic coating. Stick these in and then I get the blue MDPE piping, which is water pipe. This stuff's really good because it's resistant to UV, it doesn't degrade in the sun. And I just kind of slot them on like this and then another one on there and that kind of holds them in. If you've got raised beds, this is one reason that I would kind of like raised beds, especially for my brassicas, you can just slot these on and the, the pressure of the wood here and here will kind of keep it taut, so it's a little bit easier. So getting the hoops up, nice and simple. Getting the net on, maybe a little more difficult. <laughs> now you might remember, I didn't roll this up, I store it particularly well, but hopefully it won't be too difficult. Can't tell which way is the long way and which way. I think I did it in half, maybe. Fold it in half that way. Hey, I think, yeah, that's it. All you gotta do is get a corner. 
This one goes over. No. Oh, God. Go on. There we go. There we go. Now we just got to clip it on. Simple as that. Is this going to work? I mean, it should do, right? There's no reason it shouldn't. There's a bit of a gap on this side. It doesn't quite come down to the floor. Okay, this is going to take a bit of trial and error. I'm a little bit concerned as well because this, these things put all the pressure in one spot. It makes it look like it might rip the netting quite easily. Only time will tell, I guess. So it looks like it goes on easy at first, but I've spent ages trying to fiddle with this and it's just not quite, not quite enough either end. And it keeps, it all collects in strange places. Like all of this collects for some reason. So it's not quite rectangular. It's not quite big enough to cover the space, so. <laughs> I need a beer. <laughs> so we've done it. It's looking quite nice and taut, actually. Over time, those ends will bend in with the winds. I've just had to wrap them up in wood again, and I'm not too sure about the spring clamps, actually. They might not work as well. The problem is that because these green stakes are quite thin, the point of pressure when you put these on is at these orange tips meeting each other. It, it, if you went around the blue, you can clamp them into the big part here, and that would be a bit more secure. But because it's not like that, if there's any upward pressure, actually that seems pretty stable, but they might kind of raise up and down quite easily. So we'll just give it a go, see how they go. It's only five o'clock, so what I'm gonna do is carry on getting the plot just looking a bit nicer, and then hopefully, Next episode, we can have a full tour. I can take it easy. There won't be a hundred jobs to do to stress about. And we can just, like I say, take it nice and easy. And I can have a good proper chat about everything that's going on in the beds. And that'll be nice, won't it? <laughs> I really hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, please remember to like and subscribe, do all the YouTube stuff. And hopefully I'll see you again next time. <laughs> so tired. <laughs> A little while ago, I had a viewer ask me about this little insect hotel. I'm really, really happy because I've noticed that loads of things are using this this year. <laughs> and earlier, I just got a really nice video of a bee, probably a solitary bee. That's normally solitary bees that use these. But <laughs> whatever's in here is very aggressive. <laughs> and <laughs> most of the time that I open this shed door, <laughs> I start to get attacked <laughs> by a bee. So uh, if you're getting one of these, just be mindful where you're putting it. <laughs> Ah, oh, there it is. <laughs> it's not like aggressive, but it just hovers right by your ear and then it follows you around for a little while. I don't think it likes me. <laughs> <laughs>